I'm something kind of honest. Three seconds, three seconds. Okay, ready? Okay. <laughs> You're tuned to Once Upon a Fairy Tale. Hey, Double Ds, and welcome to another episode of Once Upon a Fairy Tale, the podcast. Uh, Disney Dwayne here with Stephanie Lee, who Hello. is was the last Mary Poppins on Broadway at the New Amsterdam, uh, and I'm uh, very, very excited to have her here with us today. Um, we're going to be asking some questions. We're going to be playing some games as well. Uh, so yeah, and if you're listening in and without watching it, we're available on YouTube as well. So be sure to check out the YouTube video because you actually get to see Stephanie uh, and participate in some of the fun games. So the first thing is, Stephanie, like um, I've never told you, your voice is just is amazing. Huh? Do you do you warm That's up? Like nice. do you Thank do you just you. wake up and have have a voice like that? Oh, your vibrato is is amazing. Thank you. That's very nice. I'm actually very insecure about my voice. What? Yeah. Actors are always so insecure. I am. I am. I'm very insecure about it. So that's very nice to hear. I appreciate it. Um, I do. I warm up. I actually do more of... I always do like um, my acting vocal warm-up, so right. not necessarily for um, vocal. So I do those first, which is sort of warming up all of my resonators in my body. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just started training uh, with Ale in the Alexander Method. So... Mostly now I just do those warm-ups and it's mostly about relaxing your body as much as possible and letting the sound sort of fill your body and mm -hmm. um, releasing tension. So that's what I focus on or right. am focusing on right now. Right. Awesome. And you came straight out of Carnegie Mellon and got your like one of your first few jobs like quite straight away, Mary Poppins, was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I graduated oh nine uh, from Carnegie and then I moved to the city that winter, because I was doing a summer stock gig in uh, Pittsburgh that mm -hmm. summer, and um, I, you know, I was probably seven months before I booked Mary Poppins, but, um, and I, fun fact, was an actual nanny for my side job. Oh, wow. You know, there are hundreds of people mm. at auditions. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Was there a lot of rejection before that? Oh, um, yes. I mean, my life is... Constant rejection. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're an actor, that's kind of what it's going to be. Um, so yeah, I mean, I especially the the first like big job when you we first graduated from school. There's always questions of like, can I do this? Am I going to be able to make a living? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, I was auditioning probably, I don't know, an average of like four auditions a week yeah, that whole that's time, and you know, not not booking any of those. But it and it's it is such like a matter of the right time and right place because I wasn't even going to go on the audition for Mary Poppins. Oh wow! Um, so how did that happen? Did you well, get an agent before that? That yes, yeah. That I had um, I got an agent out of Showcase, which is what uh, Carnegie Mellon does. Right. Um, so I had an agent and a manager already in New York, and I. But I, my, I had booked out for vacation, so like my parents were coming to visit, right. and we were gonna go see my sister who was living, I think, in Vermont at the time. So they had come to visit me in New York, and we were planning on leaving. And um, the appointment came through for uh, the tour of Mary Poppins, and so something I was like, oh, I guess I, I, I think I should probably go to this. I want to go to it. My parents were like, okay, we'll just leave a day later, um, and so. Yeah, I, I went and auditioned. They had me come back later that afternoon. Wow. And then right after that, we left for vacation. And I remember I remember being in the car with my mom and thinking, like, it was the next day. And I remember being like, oh, I wish, like, I kind of thought I was going to hear about that one. Like, right. I just so you like, weren't sure. Feedback. Oh, I definitely right. wasn't sure. But I, okay. but I was like, oh, I kind of, I don't know, I had, like, a little bit of a feeling. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, you know, and I was like disappointed. And then um, I was, I remember I was at my sister's house and I got the call that, you know, I had booked the tour and. Wow, so no one called back after, just like one, mm -hmm. one call back after and that, and that was it. Yeah. That's insane, that's crazy. Yeah, well, and this was for the understudy originally. Right, I oh, started so understudy. Right, right, so you and it kind of in the ensemble. your way. Mm -hmm. So, and then I, you know, a week later was, I flew to Florida to start tour. Like, wow. you know, it was like a complete 
life changed very quickly. And so on that tour, was that Laura Michelle on tour that you were understudying? No, no, no. Um, that was Caroline Sheen, right. who never did it in, um, in New York, but she had done it in the UK. She did the UK tour and then right. came over to the US tour. That's amazing. <gasps> yeah. Crazy. Oh, I was just thinking about her. <laughs> I love her. Right. Um, okay, so let's see. Oh, my contacts are... We're, we're in between shows right now, so I yes. actually have a braid that I'm hiding in here. <laughs> and I have... A, a, in case you're wondering why the eyeliner, it's like it's like Wayang Chinese eyes. And I have but, very intense eyebrows. And she's... And... Lashes and lashes. crazy eyeliner, too. But that's... But you look fairly normal. Do I? Mean, I? At, least, at least more normal than I. That, I mean, mm, yeah, you look I mean, a little less normal. You don't have normal. to bring that, that the red wig. <laughs> <laughs> How how much of how how much of Mary Poppins did you know before you started? Did you watch mm-hmm. Saving Mr. Banks? Did you read the books? Oh. Um, so before I auditioned, I mean I had I hadn't seen the show before I got the appointment. So I I literally went got the appointment, went to the show that night, oh, wow. watched it, and then went in the next day. Um, and I watched the movie a ton growing up. Like I loved watching it when I was younger. But other than that, nothing. And then once I um, got the role, I read all the books. Um, Saving Mr. Banks was not open yet. At the time, right. Yeah, it, like after, I think it was after we closed it came out or okay. something. Maybe, I'm not wrong about that. But have but you seen that though? Yes, I loved it. It's so beautiful. I watched it with my mom too, and which was really nice because we were like, Oh, like, I get it. Like they're doing that thing, you know. I don't know. I had no idea all of that came from her, her, her issues with her mm-hmm. dad, you mm-hmm. know, Mr. Banks and everything. It's pretty fascinating. Yeah. How about the merchandise at the show? Did you did you mm. get any of them? Like what? Oh yeah, I gosh, a lot. Um, so you have the, the parent mugs. umbrella. I don't Not that have one. the parent umbrella. umbrella. Okay. I think my mom probably has one somewhere. I'm like, my mom has all the merch. <laughs> I got my family gifts of merch that Christmas and the next Christmas. Um, so what do I still have? I still have the mu- like the huge super cow mug mm-hmm. with the letters on it, which I love. It's also a really good mug. Um, what else do I have? The little keychain. like The, the carpet the bag Carpet one? bag keychain. Right. I think I have some Mary Poppins dolls that people gave me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, uh, did you get the scented candle? I know there's a really... No, I didn't even know about a scented candle. Scent. Okay, maybe it was done by the time you were there, because I used to sell merch there what for a bit. What was it scented? Lavender? It was blue. It was, oh. the, it was the nicest smelling candle. Um, That's I, nice. I loved it. I loved oh. it a lot. And there's a snow globe, too. Yeah, I didn't get the snow globe. Snow, um, what was your top selling merch? Um, the shirt. The super califragilisticexpialidocious yeah. shirt. Um, I had a practically perfect shirt for a while, too, the pink one. Mm-hmm. I actually taught um, these girls a workshop yesterday mm-hmm. um, that had to do, and I taught them with super cow letters, and I hadn't listened Wait, yesterday? to... yesterday? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Gonna, okay, and what, what happened? Well, I just hadn't listened to the album in so long, and like it's so funny how music immediately brings you back to that mm-hmm. place, and I like got nostalgic so quickly and started, you know, like it just immediately transports you back to those feelings you were feeling when you were doing that show. Yeah, three years, right? Yeah. How do you, I've never, you know, I've never done in my life like a show for three years. I don't know, does it get, you, I would I would say you have a very cheery, sunny, bright disposition, um, and I'm sure it's a choice. How do you, how do you keep that? I'm sure sometimes in a show, you know, there's sometimes there's drama, sometimes you get bored with it, right? We're, we're human beings, we get bored with shows. How do you keep that? Yeah, that was probably the biggest challenge that I wasn't expecting, because also it was my first show out of college, so I had never done a show for longer than a couple weeks, I right. think, like three weeks. Wow, from that probably to <laughs> three years. Yeah, um, so it was a huge learning curve for me, because not only was I doing you know, a show for a long running show, but I was also like carrying a company for the first time. I was working for a huge, you know, conglomerate for the first time. It was like, it was, uh, I was learning so much stuff. Um, but for me, I kind of came to view it almost as um, like a yoga practice in a way, mm. like in the way that you're doing the same thing. So it, it almost forces you to be present in a way that if you can be present it 
it's helpful to find out where you are because you're doing the same thing every day. Right. Does that make sense at all? Yeah, it does. It does. Um, and I, yeah, and I also feel like you rarely are given a chance to like chip away at a character so f- like so intricately. Um, and I, you know, every show I learned something, every show I was finding something new, even if it was like super small. Right. But um, three years of that, and you like will construct a, a very detailed character, hopefully. And you know that was something that I was like, you know, I got to know Mary Poppins like very well. I right. um, so that was that was kind of a joy. And but that's you know my positive spin on it. It is it is a huge it's a hugely difficult thing. And and I think every time I go and see a Broadway show that I know has been running for a long time. I like has such a different perspective of watching everyone and first and foremost being like grateful for their performance. Right. Of not only being vulnerable in general because it's always vulnerable to perform, but mm-hmm. also to like, you know, the deal with the fatigue and and what that takes to do a show eight times a week for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, like, for me, I sometimes when I do a show, I feel a little trapped. Like, I feel, especially, you know, because we perform in the evenings and the weekends, there are a lot of things that happen in the night, you know, social <laughs> life, friends, things like that. Mm-hmm. So a lot of things you have to kind of miss. Um, and also, just, just the thought of having a show at night, like when you're out about in your day, because that's the only time you have your yes. day, right? Mm-hmm. But with the show coming up, like, I almost feel I can't really settle into my life. Did you get used to that? Or, I mean, because three years, I mean, I've never done anything that long. Did it become something that you just accommodated and, and was used to? I don't think so. Okay, <laughs> so there was a sense of like... I still always felt that, and it's it changes with each role that I'm doing because there are different demands, but certainly with Mary Poppins, I it required so much energy. Um, so I was kind of... I became slightly paranoid about having enough energy to do the show every right. every day. So I pretty much had to conserve my energy until the show. Um, maybe I could do like one, you know, do like have a voice lesson or right. try and do a dance class or like go grocery shopping. But it was usually like one thing. And I was definitely sleeping at least 10 hours right. a night doing This that is what role. performers do, guys. Like, it's not easy. I mean, you think we only work the show, but it's on our minds the whole time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it is, like, you you can't expend all your energy at the beginning of the day because you have to, to do this huge thing at night yeah. and the weekends. And that that is also a hard thing about long-running shows. You, you miss out on a lot of sort of big events, like yeah. weddings and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to the game soon, so hang on. We're going to play some fun games. Uh, we're going to see uh, how fast we can each say s- spell supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, uh, as well as we're going to do some trivia with each other. So stay tuned for that. Just it's a couple more questions. Um, so in terms of what the, one of the biggest things you've learned, I mean, when, when you went into the industry, was it anything like you expected? And now that you've been in for, for this number of years, what have you taken? What have you learned from it? Mm. Oh gosh, I've learned so much um, because it's something I they certainly didn't teach me in school. Like it's I don't even know if it can be taught in school. It's such a hard mm-hmm. thing to try and explain the, the right. business side of things. Um, is that what I expected? In ways, yes. In uh, I think I there's no way to prepare yourself for the amount of rejection that you get and how you handle that. Right. Um, and even still, like it is a, it's a hugely complex issue to, to have to deal with and it changes of how I feel about myself, you know. So that I'm, I'm still battling with. But um, I think what I've learned is if I'm now sort of in a place where I value um, my own artist more than more than trying to fit into a mold that I think people want. Um, I think when I first graduated, it was very much like, okay, let me try and please other people and let me try and decide like what they want to see. And now I'm just coming to a place where I'm like, I know, I know myself a little more in general and I know what I can do and I know what my strengths and weaknesses are. And um, 
I value what I can bring to a role, and I know that it is completely different than what someone else would bring to a role. Yeah. And that's okay. That's yeah. actually really, really good. And I'm not trying to um, make myself into either a, a lesser version of someone or a better version of someone else. It's I, I want to be me and say the things that I have to say. Yeah. That's probably the biggest thing I've learned so far. That's valuable for actors, is mm. just be yourself. I mean, you can be the best version of yourself. Nobody else can be the best version of yourself, so why not? Yeah. Why not it, be yourself, right? It eliminates the sort of competition that can also be, like, hugely detrimental to creation, you know? So yeah. I think it's important. Two more questions. One thing I noticed is you're so down to earth. I mean, has it ever been attractive I mean just playing up the whole like you know when you're in a lead in a show it's mm. it's has it been has it seduced you into falling to the trap of like oh I'm this someone now and like everybody wants my attention and like and then you put your worth in it and then I don't know mm. like mm -hmm. yeah I think I got a little bit of a taste of that when I was in Mary Poppins like just the um, all of a sudden uh, people were treating me differently <laughs> and I didn't really know what to do with that to tell you the truth but um, it was always really important for me to feel connected to the cast and the crew and like the company. And so I guess my experience with Mary Poppins was, because I started in the ensemble and I had such an amazing time with them and I loved it. And then actually when I took over as Mary Poppins, I was lonely. Because all of a sudden I didn't, I wasn't around like the cast as much because that track sort of yeah. is with the kids and that's it so all of a sudden I was like wait I'm like separated from everyone and and that was kind of hard for me to deal with and I tried to figure out ways to like connect with people and I like hosted tea in my room once a week and like tried to you know but that was it wasn't really like a down to earth it was more of a selfish thing for me because I was like I need to like make sure <laughs> that I feel like I'm connected because I mean that's one of the best things about theater for me is yeah, the, the, the connection and the community and you are like you know like when you're creating with someone it, it is it is a intense bond like no matter yeah. what and and I love it I've always loved that so yeah. um, I guess I I always err more on the side of like wanting to keep that mm -hmm. um, no matter what role I'm cast in in a show and kind of fight for that that yeah. seems to be important to me yeah all true mm. and and you know like it, people misunderstand as social as it seems backstage in theater actually if you don't really make an effort it's very easy to be very disconnected you can mm. just come and do your makeup and you don't even talk and you see the person on stage and that's it I mean like in this show if, if you know for me if there's no chance to like if I if I wanted to talk to you I'd have to make an effort to talk yeah. to you I mean otherwise yeah, I won't, we, don't we don't really cross paths mm -hmm. yeah one, so one last question. What's a funny story you remember? Corpsing or a mistake you've made? or Ooh, I'm sure there are a lot, but just... So many. Just In Mary Poppins? Mm -hmm, oh, there one. was one time... So that we know you're, you're human. Oh, I'm <laughs> definitely Mary Poppins human. Is, you know, the, definitely well, is human. the thing is, as Mary Poppins, when you mess up, it's really hard to recover from because sh you're practically perfect. perfect. Yeah. So you're like... <laughs> <laughs> and Steffi is not practically perfect. So it was just always so like... I mean, like... Uh, so I had to run up and down the stairs mm -hmm. many, many times. There were a couple times I fell, oh, which was oh no. just the worst. Because you fall and you're like, ah, I gotta get up from this. <laughs> like everyone, <laughs> and then like I remember I would those days I would go and see people at the stage door, and all the little kids are like, you fell. Oh. <laughs> like yeah, I did. I love when people mess up on stage, and I love when I mess up on stage. As long as no one's hurt, like yeah. it is one of my favorite thing <laughs> it just I, it brings me so much joy because it does it's like oh we're all human and like yep. you know it's it's just like a vulnerable thing which I sort of love um, there was one time I was changing I was having to quit you know there's so many quick changes as Mary Poppins mm -hmm. and I was had to change skirts or something and somehow my bloomers like got untied uh -huh. and they used to tie them to my corset so like or they came undone somehow, where I was like, okay, I'll just step out of them, because it was really quick, I didn't have a lot of time, so I was like, I'll step out of them, but they were still attached to my corset, and they could not like get it out, so like my bloomers were like trailing out of my dress, and I was about to go up in the lift for, um, like to come up the chimney, 
And I left Gavin sort of up on the roof for a while, oh vamping gosh. while we tried to figure it out. Sorry, Gavin. Fun Sorry stuff. That. <laughs> That's a hard, like I see, and it, I, I see, what was Ashley Brown? I, I used to, to watch her a lot doing merchandise, like, and, and it would literally stop, and I would see her like fly a little bit every time because oh. it's such a fast. Oh, it's fast. It's yeah, fast? It was, yeah, it was a little. It's I, fun. I missed that, yeah. <laughs> All right, good. So we've wrapped up the interview segment. Now we're going to have some fun. Here's how the game segment works. We've each prepared three questions for each other. And anytime any one of us gets a question wrong, that's going to give three seconds to the other person to try and make the other person laugh while that person has his mouth or her mouth full of water. Whoa. That's intense. So you just want to get the questions right, basically. I feel like I'm going to be bad at making you laugh, but okay. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll see. So who do, do you want to start, or do you want me to start? Like, I don't, yeah, I don't care. You okay. start. I start? Yeah, okay. you start. Okay, so in Step in Time, mm -hmm. Bert climbs the proscenium arch from stage blank <clears throat> to stage blank. From stage left to stage right. You are right. Wow. Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay, so I don't, I don't get a chance to do anything yet. No, okay, you your to. turn. Okay, I'll, you're never gonna get these. Oh no, this is bad. <laughs> what do you mean? Why am I never gonna get this? <laughs> they're, they're really hard. I feel like. not hard, but like, I, I like, but you're, you, you won't know. They're not like that. But okay. Sorry. Well. I wish I had a, a, a lifeline or something, but okay. <laughs> okay. Um, here's this. Well, I'll, well oh, maybe. Okay. Um, uh, do you know what do they have to do when Bert, when the proscenium walk did not work? Do you oh know what the plan B was? I kind of know this. I've seen it happen where it didn't work, actually. So he just, oh my gosh, what did he do? He, I know, well, he didn't go up. He just stayed on stage and he just, he just stayed on stage. Yeah. I mean, yes, that's basically it. Yeah. He does like a tap dance, like on, he has to like, he has his own routine that he's learned. Right. Well, that Gavin Lee came up with. That's, but he's still like hooked up to the thing and then. Yeah. He well, just does it and it's really awkward, I think. It, I saw it when he went up and then halfway in the middle, they they couldn't continue for some reason, so they just lowered him down and then oh. he just... He oh, just that's scary. Stuff. Yeah. I feel like I've actually maybe seen that once too. But my other favorite plan B is when, <laughs> in Wicked, when um, the Alphaba doesn't go up on the thing. Uh-huh. Everyone just like gets on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> How long do they have to go? Just there and so sings funny. it, which is so like I that's love funny. like wah wah plan B's like that. They're very funny. Oh right? wow, that's funny. Um, <laughs> well, wow. you got that one. You know. Okay, good, cool. Okay, your next one is going to involve the mic. Oh, I'm nervous. Right. So this works. This is a gift from my angel backstage. We're in a show called Forbidden City. Plug in case this goes out. Come like, and there's it. still a week. Come see it at the Esplanade Theaters in Singapore. Um, okay. <clears throat> so it works like right right this. There is some echo. Wow, that's the amazing. Echo. All right. Cool. So you're gonna have to complete the line. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, oh. yes. So you get to do some singing actually. So I'm going to read the first line, both Aww. prim and proper and never too stern. These are lyrics from Practically Perfect. Well educated yet willing to learn. So you got to sing this right up till the end of that sentence. Both prim and proper. Okay. Oh gosh. I'm not going to remember <laughs> Both prim and proper and never too stern. Well educated yet willing to learn. I'm... Something and honest as me right. <laughs> and I wear shoes of the sensible kind. I suffer more. no nonsense, and whilst I remain, there's nothing else I feel I need explain. Good. Oh, wait. You're in trouble though. Well, I'm gonna give you a chance though. You gotta. You can. You have some time to think about it. Well educated, yet well -educated willing to learn. Yet willing to learn. 
I want to say like clean, but that can't be it. I'm clean. Mm -hmm. What and else? Honest. Yes. My manners were fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you saved yourself. All right. Oh my Good goodness. Good job. I Good haven't said that in so long. <laughs> I have nightmares about this all the time. I have nightmares about this all the time. Really? Um, yeah, because I, I will constantly have dreams that I have to go back and do Mary Poppins. Right. And I don't remember it. And that's like, that. it always is the beginning part. And I'm like, is that one? I don't know. I mean, it's the, the it's practically perfect. Right, right. <laughs> well done, though. Wow. Thank you. Well, awesome. Sort of. I took okay. it for three years. You would think I would know it. <laughs> okay. Um... All is still dry, all is still safe. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Um, do I need to turn it off? Is it okay? No, you can leave it on. What did they have to paint on me every night? This is not war paint, right? I mean, you're in war paint, but we're talking about <laughs> okay. Mary Poppins. Yeah, Mary Poppins. They had uh, to paint something. Oh, I feel like I know this. But I don't. <laughs> my my mind draws a blank now. Is this in the shop? This was backstage. Like it was like part of the design. Can and I... it was sort of specific to me. Just you? Well, Thanks. it wasn't every Mary Poppins that they had to do this to. How would I know this? I don't know if you would know it. That's what I'm saying. This you might not know it. <laughs> What's what, what, is? Are you painted for the whole show or before a particular scene? Can you give me a clue on like the whole show? The whole show. What do they have to paint on you? Mm -hmm. Okay, I know. I think I know. Because you're blonde, <gasps> they would have to try and match the hair color mm -hmm. just around here, right? Close. Like, close. The eyebrows. Eyebrows. No, no, not eyebrows. Well, definitely eyebrows. But but you're really close to the hair. I mean, yeah, it is. It is my hair. It was okay. my hair. But. So the wig, um, because it was a, you know, like her hair's always up. Right. And David Brian Brown's amazing designer, and he wanted to give it a very natural look. Right. So it was what's called a three-quarter wig. Right. So it basically is from here to here. Oh. They came cut off there, and then they would take this back part of my hair and put, like, my real hair and weave it up into the wig. Right. So it gave it, like, a, a very natural look. Look. Okay. But since I'm blonde, they would have to paint the back of my hair for oh. men every night, which was Interesting. terrible. Oh. <laughs> Getting now, it out. I mean, yeah. I right. had like these, it would come off in these like black flakes, oh. and I just had them everywhere in my apartment for you know, oh, gosh. two years. It's like, oh, great. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So I'm, am I spare? I think so. Was... You, you got the hair. All right. hair. Yay! That was did tough. It. That did was it. tough. Good question. I never very, very very surprised question. about that. <laughs> well, I Good mean, job. if it was only you, then, you know, it makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, okay. Like, I think they did it for Scarlet, too. Right. But, yeah. Well, I wouldn't have known, like, the whole, like, how they weave and then they had to yeah. paint the hair. Like, that's yeah. not anything I would have known. Okay, so my last question for you. You can Another use mic. this, too. Um, it's also a memory thing. Oh, dear. Oh, and dear. It's, it's close to one. It's actually a third line in the show. Oh, okay. So I'm going to read for My you. third line in the show? Your third, I think, when you appear. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read the first few lines. Um, and yeah, it starts with Mr. Banks going, Well, yes, I mean, uh, have you brought your references? May I see them, please? And you go, Oh, I made a point to never give references. A very, a very old-fashioned idea to my mind. A very, yeah. And then Mr. Banks goes, Is that so? Well, we'll have to see about that, won't we? And then you reply, looking at the cello tape letter. <laughs> now let's see. Now that, then. Now then, let's see. The qualifications. <laughs> what? Item one. Do you even say these lines? I don't think so. What are your three qualifications, basically? Rosy cheeks and fairly pretty. Rosy cheeks and fairly pretty. Mm -hmm. Um, oh god. Something about... No. It's rosy cheeks, obviously, I'll give you that. And then there's two more. Fairly pretty? No. What? That's definitely one. 
Really? Okay, this is a script then that's <laughs> wrong, but... The script is wrong, but I don't remember. Well, there are two more. Rosy cheeks and fairly pretty. Uh, I hope there's no objection on that part. Uh, um, uh, 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 no boards? No? I don't know, I may be wrong. I, I could be <laughs> wrong. Uh. What, what does that say? Because uh, I think I lost. A cheery but... disposition. A cheery disposition. Is that one? Mm. Mary Poppins fans. This yeah, is exactly. I don't know. I don't the know. last one. Rosy cheeks and fairly pretty. I hope there's no objection on that part. I don't remember. I don't remember. Playing games, all sorts? Play games, all sorts. Do you remember that one? Yes, that's definitely one. Okay. So you, you missed out, basically. So you gotta fill your cheeks yeah, yeah. with water. <laughs> and I'm gonna try and make you laugh. Okay, okay. Do you have water? Oh, here. Here it is. Rosy cheeks and fairly pretty. Oh gosh, I don't remember. I think I... No, I could be wrong. I mean, I'm I mean, sure you're right. I don't, but I don't, but that seems wrong. Internet. I don't know. Like, wrong? That seems wrong. But I don't know. I did other shows. I can't keep all these lies in my head. Okay, fill in my cheeks with water. Yeah. Here we go. And when it's my turn, basically my cheeks are full. There are no rules. You can do anything to try and make the person spit water out. Okay? <laughs> anything. I'm gonna do the most obvious thing. Where you can't even. You 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 are gonna spit water on the floor. There's no there's no doubt about it. You ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> oh god! All right, cool. Three seconds. This <laughs> good. I nice. Guess. Now uh, it's my turn. <laughs> I feel like that was worse for you than it was for me. <laughs> you like? Yeah, I know, me. right? Like I didn't even. I duck. Anyway. Okay, uh, okay, this is the last, the last one. one. You might you you might know this. I'm not okay. sure if you listen to it enough. Uh oh. Do you know how to say super fat fragile stick X real just backwards? Oh no, this is the one thing I don't <laughs> You don't? I'm just Jeez. gonna drink water. How do you say it backwards anyway? Soon to live exit to look off of the Come yes. in! Come in. Almost. Are you Earl, we're doing an interview. <laughs> Get out. Hey Earl, do you want to say hi? Earl, come say hi! Well. <laughs> Alright. Oh god, you're going to do the same thing now. Oh, okay. I'm ticklish though. Ugh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have to fill more! Fill your cheeks! You have to do more! <laughs> like, like, yeah, you gotta have like puffy cheeks. I have puffy cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready? Mm. Oh no! <laughs> three seconds, three seconds. Okay, ready? Okay. <laughs> oh, that was easy. <laughs> oh, that was really That's hard. horrible. Oh, I'm so sorry, your floor. It's alright. Should it's I right. grab a tissue? No, like, no, no, <laughs> dry. I didn't expect to be such a weakling. I've never played this game. <laughs> no, this is like... actually, as soon as I filled my cheeks, I was like, oh no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and my waters and my eye and Anyway, okay. okay. Do you want a tissue? You want a tissue? No, I'm you? good, I'm good. Okay. So just, we just have one last thing before yes. I say okay. thank you and everything. We're gonna just time ourselves. I don't know how we're gonna time this, but see who can spell Supercarol Fetch and the Spade just the fastest. Should we just start at the same time? <coughs> see who finishes first? No, but then we can't hear each other. We might skip on some oh, letters. Oh, okay. okay. How do we do it? Your phone? Time it? Yeah, phone. Okay. So you're gonna spell? No, uh, I'm doing oh, it. Yeah, okay. yeah, you do it. Okay, ready? Here we go. S U P E R C A L A F R G A L I S T. I don't. Ha ha ha! No. Try again. Do I get to? Yeah, do I yeah, get to? Yeah. Okay. S U P E R C A L A F R G A L I S T. I C A X P R E L I D C I O U S. I'm not sure if I said seconds? all of them right. <laughs> I, uh, there was an I L I L I D that part. I think it was. But we'll give it to you. Five. Five point. Five point one. Okay, so that's good. Now let's see. Right, how do I stop this reset? Okay, here we go. S U P R C L F R G I L I C I C X P I N O D O C I O U S. No, I, I. You did it. No, I kind of tripped over it, but. That yeah. was. I think you win. He was four point eight. Listen. Yay! You won. <laughs> 
Thank you, Steffi. Thanks oh so God, much for, for this interview. It was so much fun. It was. It was um, fun to relive those memories. Yep. Um, um, back yeah. to Mary Poppins land. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks for watching. And uh, be sure to tune in for the next interview. I'm going to interview Tim Hughes. Uh, he's going to be in Frozen on Broadway. Uh, so after I watch the show in February, uh, that interview will be out as well. Thanks so much, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, you can follow Steffi on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, follow me. At... I is it just private? Forgot. No, it's not private. It's not private. It's Stephanie Lee, S T E F F A N I E L E I G H, with an underscore in between. I'm terrible at social media. <laughs> that's what we. The need link's to gonna know. be in the in the description yeah. below. Yeah. Follow All right. the link. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>